Hi, so today we're going to be going over something that kills a lot of MacBook Airs that were produced from 2013 through 2016 with liquid damage. This is the base model that Apple was offering for a really long time, so it's very popular. It's also very susceptible to liquid damage that you can't really see with an untrained eye. So as you can see here, we've got a MacBook Air that has it, the charger light is turning orange, but the fan is not spinning, it's not starting, and as you can see, if we unplug it and plug it back in, we don't even get a quarter fan spin. So let's go over what's most likely causing this problem. On the schematic, there's always going to be a page called Power Aliases, which is going to list all of the different power rails inside the machine. So we're going to go through these rails, and I'm pretty sure that most of the more experienced people watching know which one's going to be missing, but for the benefit of people who are new, we're going to measure each one of these rails. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to load each one of them up into the board view software and find where they are and have our trusty multimeter help us measure them. The first rail on the list is going to be PP Bus G3 Hot which according to our board view is going to show up right over here. So when we measure that, we get 8.58 volts exactly as expected. When we go down the list to the next rail, we can measure over here, and let's find that. We get 8.58 volts. Continuing down the list, we're going to go through and until we find our missing rail. That's present. We can ignore this rail over here because if the charger was not working, we wouldn't be getting anything on the other rails. PP3V42 we can also ignore. As we noted before, the charger light works, and if you've watched my one wire series videos, you'd understand that to, for the charger green light to work, we need this. We're going to continue down here to PPVRTCG3 hot. And you'll see that that's present as well. We go to PP5ES5 down here. PP5ES5 is find and measure U. And we got 5 volts. And now we're at the rail that if you're more experienced, you know that this is going to be the one that's missing. So we find this rail. And that's going to show up right over here. So let's find that on our board. And as you can see, we get zero volts. Now, if we were to go on the schematic over here, the first thing I want to figure out is where is this created? And what tells this to turn on? This is going to be created by this buck converter at U7501 with transistor Q7520, which is going to send spikes, which is going to send spikes of 8.5 volts through this inductor on and off until we get an average of 5 volts. Now, what's going to enable this is going to be P5VS4RS3ENR down here. And we're going to find out where that signal comes from. That signal is going to come from PM Sleep S4L. PM Sleep S4L comes from the platform controller hub, which is a combination of a north bridge and a south bridge, which on this machine is integrated into the CPU, which most likely is missing. So if we were to check for PM Sleep S4L over here, we're going to check what we get at this point, and most likely it will not be present. And as can be seen here, we get a nice zero volts on PM Sleep S4L, which would indicate to many people that our CPU is dead. This is hopeless, throw it away, and give up and go home. The question to ask at this point is what is going to communicate with the CPU and the PCH to give it an idea of what it's supposed to do? And that's going to be the BIOS chip known as the SPI ROM on this computer. So if we were to take a look at the BIOS area, I want you to tell me if anything looks a little bit out of place. So this here is our BIOS chip. And to the untrained eye, it doesn't look like there's any problem with this part of the board. However, if we were to look a little bit closer, you'll see that over here, some of our probe points look a little bit corroded. This probe point is going to connect these two resistors here that go to the BIOS chip to this resistor over here that leads to the CPU. So if we were to check, you'll see that this SPI MLB CSL communicates here with U6101, which communicates with the BIOS chip. Now on the other side, this is going through R6120, which then goes to SPI CSOL, which goes to SPI CSORL, which goes to the CPU. 
So right here, the link that is broken is the link that's going to allow the BIOS chip to communicate with the CPU. And if that's not working, then our PM sleep S4L signal that we need to come out of the CPU is not going to come out of the CPU, which means that the CPU itself is not bad, as is often misdiagnosed when PM sleep S4L is missing. So now at this point, I want to figure out where is the link broken? Is it that we have a broken pathway between the probe point and these two resistors up here? Or is the path broken between the probe point and this one resistor down there? So I have the multimeter here in resistance mode. When I put the two probes together, in an ideal world, I would get zero ohms of resistance on the screen. But since this is a cheap ass multimeter, it's going to give me what it gives me, which is close enough for our purposes. So I'm going to see if this over here has continuity to this over here. And it seems that it does. Now we're going to check and see if this over here has continuity to this over here like it's supposed to. And this is where we have a broken link. OL, open line. So we are going to run a wire, simply scrape this away and reattach it to this. So this here is going to be covering the copper. So we're just going to scratch this away. After we scratch that away, we're going to clean it up a little bit so it looks neat. So we don't have any debris over there. So 99% alcohol will do its job. After that, we dry it off. We're going to lay some flux down here. And then we're going to put a tiny bit of solder on each point and then connect them with a wire. I'm going to use my Hakko FM2032 with the T30KN tip. I have a link below. The tin each, each side. So tin the top first, this second. And then I'm going to take a little piece of wire and attach it between the two points. I'm also putting the wire through the flux and I'm keeping a little bit of solder on my iron here so that I can tin the wire as I'm going. As a tinned wire, we'll solder on better. Once the wire is attached, I'm going to cut it off by moving it back and forth. And then we'll have a wire that's perfectly cut to length. Just to flow it in there, I'm going to use some hot air to make sure that our flux is distributed around the wire and the probe points to help these solder flow. And now we're just going to clean it off. That is our finished product. That's all well and good, but does it work? Well, you tell me. We're just going to take the MagSafe here, plug it in, and let's see if it turns on. As you can see, the fan is spinning. And if we were to measure our CPU vCore, you'd be able to tell that this is now actually turning on. So let's get the meter on, and let's measure CPU vCore at the coil. And it looks like we're getting voltage on CPU vCore. So this is turning on and good to go. And as always, I hope that you learned something.